Good morning. Our Bible readings today will be from Psalm 119 and 2 Timothy chapter 3. If you'd like a Bible, please just raise your hand and Steve will bring one to you. Psalm 119, verses 121 to 136. I have done what is righteous and just. Do not leave me to my oppressors. Ensure your servant's well-being. Do not let the arrogant oppress me. My eyes fail looking for your salvation, looking for your righteous promise. Deal with your servant according to your love and teach me your decrees. I am your servant. Give me discernment that I may understand your statutes. It is time for you to act, Lord. Your law is being broken. Because I love your commands more than gold, more than pure gold, and because I consider all your precepts right, I hate every wrong path. Your statutes are wonderful, therefore I obey them. The unfolding of your words gives light. It gives understanding to the simple. I open my mouth and pant, longing for your commands. Turn to me and have mercy on me, as you always do those who love your name. Direct my footsteps according to your word. Let no sin rule over me. Redeem me from human oppression, that I may obey your precepts. Make your face shine on your servant and teach me your decrees. Streams of tears flow from my eyes, for your law is not obeyed. Our second reading is from 2 Timothy. Chapter 3, verses 14 to 17. But as for you, continue in what you have learned and have become convinced of, because you know those from whom you learned it, and how from infancy you have known the Holy Scriptures, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. All scripture is God-breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting and training in righteousness, so that the servant of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. Let's pray. Psalm 119, 130 says, The unfolding of your words gives light. It gives understanding to the simple. Father, as we simple people come to your word, we pray that the unfolding of your word would give light. You'd give us understanding so that we may live wisely and be thoroughly equipped for every good work. And we pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, God's word is final. God's word is necessary. God's word this week we come to is clear. And you heard last week how Steve's story um, was the word of God is necessary was important in Steve's life. And I want you to hear this morning that the word of God is clear was important in my life. Because, you know, when I was three years old, I understood those words from, from Acts 16, 31 that says, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved. At a three-year-old, I could understand that I needed to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And I, as a young child, I remember I used to um, read the Bible for myself and I could understand it. I remember delighting in the stories of Jesus and who he was and what he could do. I remember memorizing scripture and understanding the words of scripture. When I was eight years old, I was convicted that I should be baptized. 
And so, as an eight-year-old, I stood before my church one Sunday afternoon and I confessed that I was a sinner and that I needed God's saving grace. All things that come from the Bible that I had understood as, as a child. When I was a teenager, I understood what the Bible teaches about heaven and hell and that heaven and hell are real and people's destination is either one or the other. And it's then that I was convicted that perhaps I should go into full-time ministry and help people understand the reality of these places and how they can go to heaven. See, the Bible being clear is, is caught up in my story, um, how from a child I understood that the, the Bible is clear. And so today we're talking about the clarity of Scripture. We're, what, what we're talking about when we mean the clarity of Scripture is we're, we're referring to the fact that you and I can understand the essential message of the Bible, that what God has said in this book, you have the ability to understand it. That's what we're talking about. And so um, here's what I want to share with you this morning. We're going to be spend some time thinking about, first of all, that God is a clear God who wants to be known, that God has written a clear word that can be understood, and then finally we'll think about how you, you and I can get clarity as we read the Bible, okay? So God is a clear God who wants to be known. God has written a clear word that can be understood and how to get clarity. So first... God is a clear God who wants to be known. And I want to start with God, and I want to start with this verse in 1 John 1 verse 5 that says, God is light. You've heard those words before, but have you thought about these words? God is light. What does light do? Well, well what light does is light brings brightness, light brings clarity, Light shows us the truth. Light shows us things that are, were hidden and in the darkness. And what God wants to do is he wants to reveal. He wants to show us the truth. He doesn't want us to stay in darkness. Our God is a God of clarity and clearness and truth. And most of all, God wants us to know him for when we know him that's when we get the real clarity he wants us to know him he wants us to have a relationship with him he doesn't want us to stay in the dark about him that's why he speaks because words reveal don't they words show who someone is and when you open the bible what your reading is you're reading a book which is about God speaking. God not only speaks in this book, but this book shows us the history of God speaking. It starts with eternity past when God was speaking within himself in the Trinity, Father, Son and Spirit. God spoke, fellowshipping within himself. And then one day God said, let there be light. And the lights were turned on and the universe was created. And God created humans and he gifted them with the gift of language. Language is one of God's creations. And he spoke to Adam and Eve and they spoke to each other. They spoke. They fellowshiped. But one day... Humans decided, we're not going to listen to God. Not listening, not listening. And because of that, our relationship with God got cut off. But, you know, God continued to speak. God spoke to a man called Abraham. He spoke to Israel on top of a mountain. He continued to speak to God's people through prophets. He even spoke through a donkey once. Right? God, this God continued to speak and the words that God spoke were written down and collected in the Old Testament. See, God spoke. And then finally, God sent his son, the Lord Jesus Christ. And, Pete, and 
we heard the words of God through Jesus who spoke and he spoke through his apostles and his apostles wrote down his written word in the words of the New Testament. Can you see that God has gone to a lot of trouble to speak to us, to show us who he is? This God who is light is showing us who he is. Nothing can stop him from speaking, not the sin of Israel, not the murder of the prophets, not the death of his dear son. This God is so determined to speak. And the kind of speaking that God gives us is not like a casual dinner party conversation. It's not just a casual chit-chat or small talk. No, when God speaks, it's a matter of life and death and it's quite urgent that you listen to him and that from his words you know him because if you don't know him let me tell you friends when it when judgment day comes and it is coming then if you don't know god personally through his son jesus christ then you will be cut off from him forever see it's so urgent that we listen and it's so important that this God speaks. And this is the starting point, that God is light. He's a God of clarity. He wants you to know him. Are you getting this first point? He wants you to know him. Now, let me ask you this. Do you think God's a good communicator? Do you think God is able to communicate what he wants? Or do you think God's a bit like you and me, you know, he gets a bit tongue-tied? There are times when God, you know, blurts something out and he says, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to say that. My temper got the better of me. Do you ever think God is lost for words? No. See, God is not like us. The one who made the tongue, the one who made language, he's a perfect communicator. He's quite capable of communicating to us. This God speaks. This God is more than able to communicate to us. And when he speaks, he means what he says. He speaks intentionally. His words are always purposeful. Listen to these words from Isaiah. Isaiah 55 verse 10, it says, As the rain and the snow come down from heaven and do not return to it without watering the earth and making it bud and flourish, so that it yields seed for the sower and bread for the eater, so is my word that comes from my mouth. It will not return empty, but will accomplish what I desire and achieve the purpose for which I sent it. Do you see what it's saying about God's word? It's good. It achieves its purpose. It does what God intends it to do. And God has all kinds of intentions for his word, doesn't he? He has words which judge people. He has words which impart wisdom. He has words which bring healing and comfort. He has words which reveal. He has words which are saving words. He has all kinds of intentions for his words, and they all achieve their purpose. God is a perfectly good communicator. He's an effective communicator. And he's perfectly capable of using human language to speak and to impart who he is. God is light, which means God is clear and he wants to be known. That's the first point. Okay? It begins with God. He's a good communicator. He's light and he wants to be known. Here's the second point. The second point is that God has written a clear word that can be understood. Now this, if you've understood the first point, you should understand the second point, okay? If you understand that God is light and that he's clear, then it should follow that his words are clear. His words are bright. Um, it's what the Bible says. The Bible, which is the written word of God, tells us that the words that you read in Scripture are clear and they can be understood. And I want to just spend a moment showing you that right now. So Psalm 119 verse 105 says, let's say this together. 
Your word is a lamp for my feet, a light on my path. That's the word of God. See, the word of God lights up our path. It shows us the way to go. It doesn't leave us in darkness. You know, in a dark world, there's so many options. There's so many different dark ways that you can go. But God says, my word is clear. My word gives light. My word shows you the way to go. Now, think about this for a moment. Why does God's word give light? Why does God's word give light? You know why God's word gives light? It's because the speaker is light. It's because the one who has spoken the words gives light and shows us the way that we should go. God's word is clear because God is clear. Okay? And there's so many places in the Bible where we find this, that we find the Bible speaking about itself as being clear. Do you remember when God's people were about to go into the promised land under Moses? And they get to the edge of the promised land, and in the book of Deuteronomy, Moses tells them, before you go in, here's what you need to know. Here's how you need to live as God's free and saved people. And they hear these words from Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 11, where God says, What I am commanding you today is not too difficult for you or beyond your reach. It is not up in the heavens so that you have to ask, who will ascend into heaven to get it and proclaim it so that we may obey it? Nor is it beyond the sea so that you have to ask, who will cross the sea to get it and proclaim it to us so that we may obey it? No, the word is very near you. It is in your mouth and in your heart so you may obey it. Do you see what's being said about God's word? You don't have to get up to heaven to get God's word. You don't have to cross an ocean and get to the other side in order to find God's word. You don't need to go searching for it. It's right in front of you so that you can obey it. See, God is telling the, his people, you can understand my word for yourself. It's accessible. You can understand it. God's word is crystal clear. Or do you remember, you know, um, in the time of the kings, King Josiah, when they were cleaning up the temple and in the cleanup of the temple, they discovered a lost book. Do you remember this story in the Old Testament in, in 2 Kings 22? And they found God's book of the law and they dusted it off and they unrolled the scroll and they read it after many years of not reading God's word. They read it and they were shattered because they understood what was written there. They knew what they had to do. You see, God's word is crystal clear and people can understand it. And during the time of the prophets, when the prophets were speaking, God sent prophet after prophet who spoke promise after promise and gave them warning after warning. And God expected his people to listen and understand and obey the word of the prophet. See, God's word is crystal clear. When we come to Jesus, we find him saying the same thing about God's word. So, for example, when Jesus comes, he says things like this. He says, haven't you read what David did? Or haven't you read in the law? He keeps saying, haven't you read? Have you never read the scriptures? Have you not read what God said to you? Go and learn what this means. And then he quotes the Bible to them. He says to Nicodemus, you are Israel's teacher and you do not understand these things. In other words, Nicodemus, you should understand these things. And you, he says to the Pharisees, you are in error because you know, you do not know the scriptures or the power of God. See, each time Jesus says these things, he's assuming that people can understand God's word. He assumes that God's word is clear. And do you know that even children, even children can understand God's word? We, we saw that in 2 Timothy 
where um, Paul says about Timothy, how from infancy you have known the Holy Scriptures. How from infancy, you know, even a child can understand the Scriptures. I, I said to my three-year-old the other day, I asked his permission to share this with you, okay? And he said it's okay. And <laughs> he's smiling. And I, I said to him, what's the meaning of life? You know what he said? Chocolate. No, he didn't say chocolate. No. You know what he said? He said, God. God. I was, I was blown over that a three-year-old can understand. I'm getting emotional thinking about it. That a three-year-old can understand what the words of Ecclesiastes says that the whole duty of man is to fear God. He's understood that. See, a child can understand the scriptures. It's so clear. It's so clear. And the scriptures are clear enough to show you the way of salvation. Again, uh, 2 Timothy says the, the, um, the sacred writings which are able to make you wise for salvation, able to make you wise for salvation in Jesus Christ. You can understand the way of salvation in the Bible. See, anyone can open the Bible and read it to be saved. I don't know how many stories I've heard about people who have been in prison or people who have been in detention or people who have been in a hotel and they've been given a Bible and found a Bible and they've had no outside help other than the illumination of the Holy Spirit, and they've opened the Bible and they've read it and they've discovered the way to be saved. See, the Bible is clear. You don't need a PhD in theology to understand it. Um, that's why we translate the Bible in different languages, because we want the Bible to be accessible in the language that you speak the most, that you understand the most, so you can understand it for yourself. Do you realize there was a time when... If you went to church, you would only hear the Bible spoken in Latin, in a language that nobody except the elite clergy understood. I don't speak Latin, but can you imagine going to church and hearing Deus lux est? Deus lux est. Does anyone know what that means? Deus lux est. Sorry? Wow, your Latin is very good, Brian. Well done. That's exactly what it means. God is light. God is light. And ironically, the church kept people in the dark for so long by speaking in a language that people didn't understand. See, the Bible is not the special possession of clergy or priests or scholars, but the Bible is given to all of God's people. That's why every Sunday in church... You'll find us at Wenty Anglican publicly reading the scriptures because God's word is clear and you can understand it. Um, that's why we encourage you to read the Bible privately for yourself daily. Why? Because you can go home and read the Bible and understand it for yourself. And you might be there thinking, David, if the Bible is clear, then why do we need you? Is that what you're thinking? Oh, no. I know you're not thinking that. No. Um, why do we need preachers and teachers to get up and preach each week? Do you know why? Because if the Bible was unclear, then if it was obscure and impossible to understand, then there would be no point in having a preacher. But the very fact that the Bible is clear and you can understand it, is exactly the reason why we teach it, to help us in our understanding. Okay. By the way, the clarity of the scripture doesn't mean that every part of the Bible is equally clear. Okay. There are some parts that are harder to understand than others. Um, some parts are unclear, and, and Paul says that about, um, sorry, Peter says that about Paul, when he writes in 2 Peter 3. You see, um, Peter says about Paul that his letters contain some things that are hard to understand. 
Okay, there are some things in Paul's writings that are hard to understand, but notice Peter doesn't say, he doesn't say they're impossible to understand. Okay, there's a big difference. It says they're hard to understand. But see, when you read Paul, the message of salvation is very clear. Even if you don't understand what baptism for the dead is in 1 Corinthians 15, all right, who, who understands that? But the way of salvation is clear in the writings of Paul. And, you know, sometimes people say, um, I'll never understand the Bible because I don't speak Greek and I don't speak Hebrew. And so, you know, I can't, you know, I can't understand what the Bible says about greed because I don't know the Greek word for greed. You heard people say that? Do you realize what you're saying when you say that? You're saying that God's word is only for an elite group of people. It's only for the academics who speak Greek and understand Greek. It's only for the Greek geeks, right? Um, it's only for the people with theological degrees. Can I just, if, if, you're, if you say that, can I just gently say, are you, can you think about what you're saying? Are you saying God is unclear? That God, you can't understand what God is saying? Don't insult God like that. God is light. God is clear. Okay? The, the clarity of the Bible does not mean that you don't need to study it. Right? The, let me say that positively. The clarity of the Bible means that you need to study it. You need to understand what it's saying. Just like the Bereans did in Acts 17, who examined the Scriptures daily to see if these things were so. That's us. That's what we need to be doing. So that's the second point. God's word is clear. And here's the final point. How do you get clarity? How do you and I get clarity? Well, I want to finish by suggesting that there are three ways to read the Bible that you and I need to be doing. We need to read with humility, with confidence, and with perspective. Humility, confidence, perspective. First, you need to read with humility. So um, look at this picture here. Okay, what do you see? You see a kid dressed up as a superhero looking at himself and he thinks, yes, I am a superhero. That's what he sees. And I want to suggest to you that this is us. This is how we go through life. We all have our blind spots. We all have our blinkers on. We all have our rose-colored glasses. And the way that we look at the world is we usually look at it in our favor. Okay? We, whenever we look at things, it's usually there to make ourselves look good. That's how we see things. Um, in our story, we're always the hero. Okay? And I want to say to us, that's very dangerous when we come to read the Bible to look at the world that way because what we'll end up doing is we'll read it to suit ourselves we'll read it to make ourselves look good and so what ends up happening is we invent ways of understanding the bible to make it easy for us you know you might read the bible and you know it says to be sexually pure and you read it and you think well i don't want to do that I want to give expression to my sexuality. And I think the Bible's being unclear when it says that. And you see what you're doing? You're coming with your own bias. You're coming with your own blind spots. And we do that when we read the Bible. We carry ideas in from our own culture, from our own experience, from our own past, from our own preferences. Um, we read it through our own lens. And, you know, when the Bible's unclear to us, you know what we need to be saying? We need to be reminding ourselves, no, the Bible's not unclear because God's not unclear. The Bible is clear, and if I'm not understanding something, you know what the problem is? The problem is me. And I've got to work harder here to understand it. And I've got to stop being the hero of the story and I've got to get rid of my, my lens and I've got to try and understand this. Okay? That, do you see, that is reading the Bible humbly. 
That's reading it with humility. Okay, that's how we need to read. Here's the second way we, we need to read. We need to read with confidence. Do you realize that the same Holy Spirit who inspired the Bible is the same Holy Spirit who illuminates the Bible? The same Holy Spirit who wrote the Bible is the same Holy Spirit who gives you understanding. When you read the Bible, doesn't that give you confidence? See, God is involved in the whole process of writing the Bible, but also in helping you understand the Bible. So when you read the Bible, pray. Say to God, God, open my eyes through with the help of your spirit so that I might see the wonderful things you have for me. Okay, read with confidence. And finally, read with perspective. And it all comes back to this. God is light. God is light. Now, I mean, imagine you had a pen pal that you were writing to for years and years and years and, you know, you, you read their letters and you read them and you think, you know what, I don't really think I know my pen pal very well. I think I'll stop writing to them. I don't think it makes sense to keep writing to them. And so you stop writing to them. And then one day you get a knock on your door and you open your door and there's your pen pal. They've flown halfway around the world just to see you. And you get to know them and you think, I actually like this person. I feel like I know them better. Do you realize that that's what God has done for us? See, God hasn't just stayed at a distance writing letters to us. You know what he's done? He has shown up in person on our doorstep. He has shown up in the person of his son, Jesus Christ. You don't need to be left in the dark anymore about what this God is like. He couldn't be any more clearer. He's arrived in person. You know him personally. See, when you look at Jesus, you can see exactly who God is in crystal clear clarity. You don't need to be left in the dark anymore about what he is like. And you know that he loves you enough to die for you. He loves you enough to give his life for you. Now, if he was willing to stoop as low as not only to become one of us, but also to die for us. Do you think he's able to stoop as low to talk to us on our level? To speak to us? Like, a, like an adult would bend down to speak to a child? Of course he's able to. His character shows that he's able to do that. And his death screams out to us that this God really wants to know you. Jesus Christ, the clarity of God. Jesus Christ, the light of God. In scripture, we have the real Jesus. Friends, God has done the very best thing to show us who he is. He's shown up in person. Keep looking at Jesus and keep getting clarity about who God is. Keep reading the Bible, won't you? You can do it. It's clear you're able to do it, and you've got his spirit to help you do it. Let me pray. Father, you really want us to know you. You've gone to all this trouble to speak, to uh, send prophets, to send your son, and to write this book, the Bible. Father, create in us a hunger to know you. Oh, Father, show us our unbelief and write your words upon our hearts, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen.